Now this is just a very simplified and stylized um, model of a brain. Uh, it's not supposed to be realistic or anything like that. Like I say, it's just going to be simple and stylized. Now, to create something like this, you could use curves and then extrude uh, other curves along the splines to create these sorts of shapes. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to keep this whole character polygon based. So we could use uh, subdivision surfaces um, and then that means that later on it's a lot easier for us to then UV and texture and paint the textures in uh, into those polygons. Now if I select it and press 1 we can see this is a low resolution model press 3 and that's nicely smoothed. Needs a little bit more work, a bit of tidying up uh, but you get the general idea. So what we're going to do now is just go through the process for creating this brain. Now like I say I wanted to keep it polygon based so as you can imagine building in these polygons here or creating a cube and extruding it can be quite a lengthy job so instead what we're going to do is we are going to use the quad draw tool this one here now this has been improved in May 2015 um, and it's excellent for retopology uh, but in this instance it's a really good for getting a base for our brain so I'm just going to create a new scene uh, and we're just gonna where's the grid there we go I'm just going to create a polygon cube to start us off. I'm going to select an edge, then double click, and that will select the edge loop. And I'm going to go connect components. I'm going to make sure insert edge flow is disabled. If it's enabled, we click apply. And then this, if this had been curved, let me just do this. Now symmetry is on. Let's just select that again, click apply, we scale that down, now you'll have seen this at the beginning of the, uh, the time lapse, creating the holes for the eyes. Um, if we turn off with edge flow, click apply, the actual flow of these edges isn't affected. If we add edge flow, click apply. As you can see, it's rounded this off very nicely for us here. Now, it's a bit uh, of a redundant point at this stage, but I just thought I'd go over that sort of improvement uh, just in this video. Like I say, in the previous time-lapse video, it was used quite a lot, but not really explained. And it will be explained in the article that accompanies this too. But anyway, we're getting distracted. So I've split this into, into two, and I'm going to turn off symmetry, so I'm pressing control and shift, symmetry, turning that off, because I just want half the cube. Select these edges, hold down shift, connect components, and there we've got edge flow on, so I'm just going to turn that off. Press control and space, just so I can work in full screen, just using the marking menus. Press three, And we're just going to make this into a rough brain sort of shape. Now this is just going to be half the brain. Like I said, we're just after a rough, a rough shape. Because what we're going to do is we're going to build on top of this. This is going to be sort of the template that we're going to add our curves on top of. So just something like that will do. Now that's quite low resolution. So what we can do now is just go to modify, convert smooth mesh preview to polygons, and that will bake in the subdivisions from the subdivision surface. So now we've got a basic mesh to start working on top of. I'm just going to press three again, just to smooth that out a little bit. So now we can start using our quad draw tool to start adding in um, our edge loops. 
and our polygon strips, which are going to dictate sort of the main masses of the uh, of of this stylized brain. But before we do, we need to make this object live so that the polygons will stick to it. And all we need to do to do that is go up to the menu up here, click the magnet, and the selected object is now live. And you'll see I can't select it, but what I will be able to do is draw on top of it. So I'll make this full screen again. I'm just going to hold down shift, go down to quad draw tool like so. And you'll see we have this pointer. So now what we can do is click, 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 click. So we have four points there and they're essentially where the vertices are. Now if we hold down shift, you'll see as I move over it, there's a green square there. If I click, that's made that into a quad. So I can create two more points, hold down shift, create another quad. And we don't need to just do it on each one in turn. We could come around like this and just add our points in like so and then go over with shift held down and you see there you can decide how you want your polygons to flow depending on where you place them so as you can see there we've got the polygons strips added in and they're following the surface of this model and as you can imagine if you'd sculpted a high detailed model brought it into Maya you could easily use this to create a nicer, cleaner, low resolution version. Now if I hold down shift, as you know, it will create new quads in between. But if I hover over a point, you'll see we can relax. And if I, if I just start painting like so, it's going to relax these points over the surface. So it's just going to smooth those out a little bit more. If I click with the uh, middle mouse button instead of the left mouse button, so I'm holding down shift, clicking with the left mouse button will smooth it like so on each paint stroke. If I hold down the middle mouse button over this edge, as you can see if I move up and down, that sort of relaxes it in certain defined steps. So that's another way of using that relax tool. So that's one way to quickly build a strip of polygons. So let's delete that. Now that can be, if you can imagine if you're clicking and adding in all those points, that can be quite labor intensive. So let's try and look at a different way. If I now hold down tab, as you can see, we have a quad which is following where I'm moving the mouse. If I hold down the middle mouse button, we can scale the size of that quad. But what we can do is use that. And as we pin, if we hold it down, as you can see, we can start to define our first areas of the brain. So we can hold down shift again, come up to the top here, and then start to paint this area up here, because that's what it's like really, you're just coming in and you're just painting. Now these are just stretched here because obviously it's being projected from the point of view of the camera. But we can now come in and as you can see, it's automatically hovering over each element, each component, sorry. So we can move these vertices and they'll automatically snap and weld to the ones that you leave them over. Move that to there. But now we've got this issue where it's crossing over. What we can do is if we press Control and Shift, you'll see it's now highlighted in yellow. And this allows us to delete components instead. So we could delete this face here, move this point to there, move that point to there and just start tidying this up or just come in use the relax tool smooth this out get rid of that where that's bent over there just 
just move these and as you can see it's just very easy to weld certain components to others it's just moving around use the relax tool to smooth areas out now here what we ideally want is this to match up here and another tool is if you hold down control as you can see we've got a green line and this will just create a a cut and then that cut will stick to the surface of the model so as you can see it sort of pulled the mesh out because it's trying to align itself to the live surface what we can also do is do it is create an edge loop this way and you can go in and create as many as you like like so and it's that easy so what we need to do now is start thinking about cleaning some of this up so let's just work around some of this what I would ideally want is these this edge here to align to another edge further up because we want this to flow around nicely so bring this down here in this instance we can just hold down control add in another edge there like so or we could just leave it if we decide we don't want it easily just snap it together like so move this point down here this one aligns to here and so on so on and obviously you could move faces as well and edges rather than just vertices but then we can use the uh, the tab key again so rather than just creating polygon strips we can extend edges so if we wanted to quickly just weld these edges here we could hold down tab extend and that's welded hold down tab extend and that's welded and now we have a hole here so we could extend it or we could hold down shift just like when we're creating points and as you can see it's now trying to fill in any holes that it can fit a polygon in so we could add one in here just tidy this up here just clean it up a little so hold down tab and we can extend this point to here just make sure those are welded yep And as you can see we don't need to extend an end on a point see that will automatically snap but we could just extend to there if we don't want it hold down control and shift and delete that there so as you can see you can very quickly get nice flows of polygons which are going to help to start us off with dictating um, the main chunky areas of our brain so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue to work around the head um, I'll pause the video for now but I'll come back in a second uh, using the magic of video uh, and the head will be all polygoned up and then we'll see what we're going to do next so as you can see I've gone around the rest of the head and just added in those extra polygons just trying to uh, <clears throat> excuse me just trying to follow edge flows which will help to dictate those main chunky areas of our brain and if we wanted to at this point we could delete that mesh underneath because we don't need that anymore so what we can do now is we've got a number of options really we could use the multi-cut tool if we hold down control as you can see we can go around these defined edge uh, edge loops and start cutting in extra edges and then we can pull those out which will form the chunks if you hold down control and shift you see the the edge cut the multi cut tool will snap to certain points along those edges as well so you can get more precise cuts what we're going to do though instead is we are just going to select the faces so in this instance just 
click, double click, up here we'll do the same, double click, so we've got that edge floor around there, see if there's any more where they're not connected, maybe this one, nope, okay, what I'll do is I will just do these two for now, and we're just going to use extrude face. Now if the thickness is too high, we can go back into our channel box, extrude face, and adjust our thickness in here. So maybe 0 0.025, that's about right. Let's press three just to see how that's looking. And as you can see, we're starting to define those main chunky areas there. So now we can go in and and select like that so we don't want that one that one as you can see just when we've been creating our main edge loops we've obviously had to add in other edges just to fill out the space so it's not an issue that's accidentally been uh, extruded there but it doesn't really matter so let's just see there extrude face again but this time we'll just go down to thickness in here 0.025 that's it just make sure they're, they're all the same thickness and again we'll go around here press G to repeat 0.025 and so on and so on we'll just go around and there's one there Another one here, G, 0.025. So there we're now starting to get those masses in there. And now we've got those, we can then go in and think, well, these edges in here, we don't really need them. So we can just go collapse edge. Don't forget to also delete by type history just to keep your model clean. Um, most of the crashes in Maya I find happen when you don't clean your history on a regular basis. Let's delete that edge in there. And now it becomes more a case of pulling the geometry around. Know, we want these edges here to come together a bit more you know just so we're getting those sort of bulging masses and just make some judgment calls on certain areas so this area here we could collapse it all make this a bit thicker Like so. I mean, we know we're going to be removing these edges here, so let's just follow those around to here. And obviously, we don't want lots of triangles leaving in the model. I'm just doing this very quickly but hopefully you get the general idea yeah a lot of this needs a bit more cleaning up a bit more tidying up um, but what we can do now is once you're a bit ha more happier with the uh, with that area there we can always go in and um, create the opposite side. Now I'm not going to use the mirror cut or anything like that, I'm just going to go and use the traditional route because I want full control over what gets welded in between here. So 
just going to combine. And now we can go in and bridge those edges. Because we want a gap leaving in the middle. Press G. See, a double click and select those edge loops like so. But we don't want the ones around the bottom. If I press G, there we go. That's bridged those areas there. We could keep that in so it's separated. But I'm going to collapse those edges, modify, center pivot, just make sure, hold down X, just to make sure that this is right on the middle of the axis. Then I'm going to press Control Shift, and with my right mouse button, I'm going to activate symmetry again. Let's just freeze the transforms. There we go. As you can see, the blue dots mean that it's uh, working symmetrically. And you can also now work with if this side of the brain was using the same topology but was slightly different, you can also now go into symmetry and work off topology. So if I select an edge which is going to be the middle of the model, hold Control Shift, right mouse button, symmetry, topology. Now it's going to work as you would expect in here because this has just been mirrored but that will work off the topology then so if this side is different to this side but it's got the same topology the mirror options will still work so that's something that's also been improved so now you can go around the brain and just start tweaking all these areas collapsing edges um, adding lots of uh, little tweaks and even adding more detail if you want to uh, but the plan is to get this base model which is polygon based we can then UV it and then we can paint in lots of veins and details and lots of all the little gruesome bits and bobs uh, later on um, if we want to. So let's just uh, add a new shader just so this looks a bit better. We'll add a blend. I'm going to make sure viewport 2.0 is enabled. Turn on ambient occlusion. And we could turn on uh, anti-aliasing as well, just so it looks a bit nicer in the viewport. So let's uh, delete by type history. So we want sort of to be pinky brain colour. Add a bit of an ambient colour to it. So, I mean, we could make it look a bit wetter. So, I'll just load in the final brain again, and we'll just have a look at that one. So, here we go again. So, now you can see this was what we started off with. And this was the aim of it and now you can hopefully see exactly how we've approached this and how we've achieved this sort of simplified brain model just using the quad draw tool that allowed us to dictate these edge loops here and the the flow of these faces which then allowed us to extrude those and create the these chunky sort of stylized brain masses here and as you saw in the time-lapse video, this was then brought in and added to our character. So that's this, uh, this section of the tutorial covered. Um, yep, yeah, and I think that's it for now. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll catch up in the next video.